There are some encouraging the relaxing of regulations and letting the virus just run its course. But our next guest says that is a very dangerous idea because of the type of virus COVID is. Joining us now, internist and author, Dr. Leo Gallup. Doctor, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thanks for having me on. So why should we not think of COVID like the new flu, something we're just going to have to deal with in the colder months when everyone sort of heads back indoors? Well, it is something that we're going to be living with. It will be annual. It may or may not be seasonal. That is, there was a huge spike last summer, and we may see another one this summer coming up. But this stop virus is very different from cold viruses and the flu virus. So when we move ahead living with COVID-19 as an endemic infection that pops up here and there, comes and goes, but is always around, um, living with it is not going to be like living with the flu. For one thing, it's way more transmissible than the flu. Last winter, the kinds of um, restrictions that people imposed to avoid COVID-19 did not stop the winter spike, but it totally wiped out the flu. And, and even though you hear about flu this winter, it's really much less than COVID. And do, do, second, oh, go ahead, doctor. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the second thing about it is the flu is basically a respiratory virus, as are colds. Although this virus enters your body through the nose and the respiratory tract, it, it actually has a high affinity for blood vessels, for the circulation. It travels all over the body and it damages blood vessels, which can create conditions in different organs of the body that go way beyond what we ordinarily see with the flu. But these complications are very common with COVID-19. And, and so much and that we still don't know about the virus. But we know that just this week, the Supreme Court, for example, shot down the president's vaccine mandate. We've seen, we're seeing some of the mandates that have been overruled essentially here in New York State when it comes to masks. There is this sort of momentum to move forward, move out of these regulations, let people get back to these normal lives. What are we supposed to do if, 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 if we sort of follow your, your, your mindset there? Well, I think there, first of all, because so many people in this country now have some form of immunity, either from having been infected or having been vaccinated, probably 80% of the population has some immunity to COVID-19, infections are going to be milder. Uh, Omicron is less likely to involve the lungs which is a good thing, but it's just as likely to involve the nose and the nose is the gateway into the brain. Uh, I think there are a number of steps that have not been encouraged enough by any of the health authorities. Uh, one is the use of a development and use of antiviral nasal sprays, stopping the virus at the point of its attack on your body, right in the nose. There are about 15 in development around the world. Uh, there are some that can be available in this country very, very quickly. Uh, and the other thing is there has been a lack of attention paid to self-care measures, to something simple like vitamin D. And, and the media is partly to blame here for constantly pushing the narrative that says there are only two things to do, separate and vaccinate. Mm -hmm. And and there actually are, are a lot of things to do. And the first thing is just pay attention to your vitamin D status. Yeah, and Dr. Gallen, as a, you know, a leader in integrative medicine, you know the importance of having someone's immune system be well, along with keeping inflammation uh, low in order to combat COVID and, you know, long COVID as well. So what are some steps that we can take in terms of, I guess, bettering our bodies to handle this? Okay, well, let's start with diet. Uh, there was a study that was published, received very little attention in which, it, but it was conducted by top scientists at Hopkins, Harvard, Stanford, and Columbia. And they looked at healthcare workers who had survived COVID-19 and they classified them as having mild disease or moderate to severe disease. And then they looked at their diets during the pre-COVID period. A 40% increase in vegetable consumption was associated with a 72% decrease in the risk of moderate or severe infection compared to minimal or mild infection. Now imagine if there was a drug that could do that, the kind of headlines that would be getting. So that's one step, just paying attention to your diet, looking at what you're eating, 
Uh, it's not even about weight loss because that's not going to happen so quickly. Increasing your consumption of vegetables from 10 servings a week to 15 on average, that's all that it took to produce that improvement. The second thing, as I mentioned, vitamin D. In the winter, north of Atlanta, you just don't get enough vitamin D from sunlight to maintain your levels. I think everyone should be supplementing with vitamin D, but the dosage is going to, needed is going to vary from person to person. Uh, there are substances that are found in the um, in healthy foods and vegetables that encourage the growth of healthy bacteria in your body. And there's a, a growing uh, body of literature indicating that having healthy microbes, bacteria in your gut, in your mouth, uh, even in your nose, helps to prevent serious COVID-19. Um, the use of probiotics mm -hmm. is probably warranted. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love that that you're giving us those key things to you know help keep people prepared. But I want to ask though about the antiviral nasal sprays. Once you think that does get approved here in the U.S., do you think there'll be less of a push for boosters? Well, uh, it's hard. It's really hard to say uh, because it, the the message that is coming from the CDC and the NIH um, has been very consistently let's vaccinate our way out of this. And what's really clear is vaccines have done a great service in limiting the severity of infection, in allowing people who have not yet been exposed to the virus to develop an immune memory of that virus. So when they get infected, they get less sick. But the vaccines have actually totally failed to prevent the transmission of the virus, yeah. as this Omicron surge is making clear. Dr. Leo Gallon, thank you so very much for joining us. Some great advice there. We really appreciate it. Thank you, sir.